Hello everyone, welcome to this video lecture of 19 SCPHYU301. We have been discussing the second chapter partial differentiation since last two lectures. And we have discussed these two topics. We first briefly saw the notations which are used in partial differentiation. And in last lecture, we discussed the concept of total differentiation, which is as follows. Suppose I have a function which is function of two variables x and y and I am considering at given point x y small change in x so that it becomes x plus delta x and small change in y at the same point which becomes y plus delta y. Now since the two variables on which the function depends are changed naturally the function will change and this difference f of x plus delta x y plus delta y minus f of x y at the two points in the function is called as the total differential total difference delta f now when we consider that these delta x delta y are tending to 0 in this limit delta f is also tending to 0 and therefore we can write this delta f as df and using partial differentiation df can be written as dou f by dou x into dx plus dou f by dou y into dy so this is the formula which can be used to find the total differential the same formula can be used for finite differences in x and y when these delta x and delta y are finite this formula can be used however this formula gives us only the approximate difference we leave out some error which is of the order of delta x square and delta y square and higher powers of them this is the plan for this lecture we want to discuss chain rule and implicit differentiation and we will also consider examples for each of them let's begin by considering the chain rule for a function of a single variable here y is function of x but it is not a simple function now how can we find this derivative dy by dx here we are differentiating y with respect to x and since y is a function of single variable it is ordinary differentiation ordinary derivative this is going to be equal to differentiation of log of sine of 2x with respect to x now we first have to differentiate this log this function which is 1 by sine 2x then we have to differentiate this sine of 2x with respect to x which will give us 1 by sine 2x in the denominator and differentiation of sine is cosine so this is cos 2x we further have to differentiate 2x with respect to x therefore this is equal to cos 2x divided by sine 2x into 2 so therefore this is equal to 2 into cos by sine is cot 2x now let's find out a similar rule for a function which depends on more than one variable suppose i have a function f which depends on three variables x y z whereas this x is some function of u and y is also a function of u so this right hand side means that x can be written as a function of u and y can also be written as a function of u now naturally we would be able to do some mathematical jugglery and write this f as a function of u this can this is possible if z also depends on u if z can be written as a function of u so suppose in this way all these three variables on which the function depends explicitly function f depends ex explicitly can be written as a function of a single variable u and suppose we want to find out this differentiation df by du total difference df is equal to dou f by dou x into dx plus 
डो एफ बाई डो वाई इन टू डी वाई प्लस डो एफ बाई डो जेड इन टू डी जेड वी वॉन्ट टू ऑप्टेन दिस ऑर्डिनरी डिफ्रेंशिएशन टी एफ बाई डी यू एंड दिस इज नाउ सिंपल ऑल वी नीड टू डू इज डिवाइड द राइट हैंड साइड बाई डी यू दैट विल गिव अस डो एफ बाई डो एक्स इन टू डी एक्स बाई डी यू प्लस डो एफ बाई डो वाई इन टू डी वाई बाई डी यू प्लस डो एफ बाई डो जेड इन टू डी जेड बाई डी यू सो दिस इज हाउ बाई यूजिंग पार्शियल डिफ्रेंशिएशन वी कैन ऑप्टेन दिस डेरिवेटिव डी एफ बाई डी यू नाउ इट इज स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड एक्सटेंशन ऑफ दिस फॉर्मूला फॉर फंक्शन विच डिपेंड्स ऑन मोर देन थ्री वेरिएबल सपोज आई हैव अ फंक्शन विच डिपेंड्स ऑन एक्स वाई जेड एंड देर आर सम मोर independent variables to that function whereas all these independent variables they depend on only one independent variable which say is y so suppose this is the situation that we have then what will be df by du it should be equal to do f by do x into dx by du Plus do f by do y into dy by du plus do f by do z into dz by du and we have to consider all the variables on which this function depends. So in this fashion, we can have chain rule for a function of more than one variables. Note here that since these independent variables on which the function depends are functions of only one variable u ultimately we can write this function as a function of only one variable which is u and therefore this is ordinary differentiation there is no partial differentiation in it let's consider one example for that suppose z is given as x cube minus xy plus y cube whereas x is r cos theta and y is r sin theta where r is a constant and what we want to find out is differentiation of this z with respect to theta so we have to obtain this derivative dz by d theta now to obtain this derivative one possibility is that we write this z as a function of theta by plugging in values of x and y as they are given in this equation so if we use x as r cos theta and y as r sin theta and plug these relations here on the right hand side of z then we will obtain z which is function of theta and then we can differentiate z with respect to theta easily but many times such dependence can be complicated and it can be either difficult or impossible to obtain this function z which is function of this one variable and in that case we can use the formula which we have just obtained on the previous slide dz by d theta can be calculated by using this formula do z by do x into dx by d theta plus do z by do y into dz sorry dy by d theta this is equal to z is x cube minus xy plus y cube into d d theta of x is r cos theta plus partial differentiation with respect to y of x cube Minus x y plus y cube into ordinary differentiation of r sine theta with respect to theta. So this is equal to three x square minus y into this differentiation is r into sine theta. but we have a negative sign here because differentiation of cos theta with respect to theta is 
minus sin theta plus the second term is going to be minus x plus 3y square into r cos theta this is equal to now r sin theta is y and r cos theta is x so therefore this equation will become minus y into 3x square minus y plus 3y square minus x into this is x here of course we have calculated this dy by d theta in terms of x and y and remember these x and y don't depend on variable theta so if required we can write this we can convert this as a function of theta but we won't do it in this example this is just a demonstration of how you can use the chain rule for finding these kind of derivatives in the previous examples we had functions of this kind where they could be ultimately written as a function of only one variable but that mon that may not be the case all the times so let's consider one such case suppose i have function f which depends on the three variables x y and z and these variables x y and z are functions of say u and v y is equal to y of u and v that means it can y can be written as a function of u and v and same z can also be written as a function of u and v so even if we change the variables and write this f as a function of u and v by plugging in these relations for x y and z that f will be a function of two variables so it depends on more than one variable and now suppose we want to find this do f by do u now this is going to be partial differentiation because f even when written as a function of u and v is a function of two variables for getting relation for do f by do u or for do f by do v the procedure can be as follows suppose we have this total difference df which is do f by do x into dx plus do f by do y into dy plus do f by do z into dz now when we say that we are differentiating f partially with respect to u that means we keep the other variable constant so we keep this v constant in that case and this dx which is difference that occurs in x which will happen since we are changing one of these two variables u and v now what is dx here dx is change in the variable x and why will it happen it will happen because we change the variables on which the variable x depends and these variables are u and v but when we find this partial differentiation do f by do u we keep v constant so v is not changed and same is true for dy in which v is fixed and is also true for z in which v is kept fixed so in this all these three functions v is kept fixed and if i find this do f by do u this can be written as do f by do x into do x by do u plus do f by do y into do y by do u plus do f by do z into do z by do u similarly do f by do v is going to be do f by do x into sorry yeah do x by do v plus do f by do y into do y by do v plus do f by do z into do z by do v let's solve this example z is given by the product x into y where x is sin of s plus t and y is s minus t we can change the variable for z which are 
x and y to variables which are s and t and then we can find out this partial differentiation dou z by dou, dou s let's calculate this partial differentiation this is equal to dou z by dou x into dou x by dou s plus dou z by dou y into dou y by dou s this is equal to dou by dou x of z is x into y into dou by dou s x is sine of s plus t plus the second term will be dou by dou y of x into y into dou by dou s y is s minus t so this is equal to y into differentiation of sine with respect to s cos s plus t into dou by dou s of s plus t this is the first term plus the second term is x into differentiation of s minus t with respect to s is 1 this is therefore equal to y cos of s plus t and this differentiation is equal to 1 plus x so therefore what we have obtained is dou z by dou s is equal to y cos s plus t plus x let's now find dou s by dou t which is equal to dou z by dou t dou z by dou x into dou x by dou t plus dou z by dou y into dou y by dou t this is going to be equal to y into cos of s plus t plus dou z by dou y is x into dou y by dou t is minus 1 and therefore this is equal to y cos of s plus t minus x therefore dou z by dou t is x sorry y cos of s plus t minus x let's consider this concept of implicit differentiation through an example we are given a relation between y and x which is y into e to the power x y is equal to sin x and we have to find the slope of the curve y as a function of x at 0 0 so this is the problem which we have to solve we have to find slope of the curve given by this relation at origin at 0 0 where x is 0 and y is also equal to 0 now how can that be done one way is to write y as a function of x so for this relation y into e to the power x y we can try some mathematical jugglery and get y on left hand side for this relation and then write the right hand side which depends only on x and in this fashion we can write y as a function of x only we can try that and once we that is done we can easily find this derivative dy by dx and this derivative at the origin at this point 0 0 will give us the slope of the curve but if we look at this relation which is given it seems difficult to write y as a function of x but we can use the concept of implicit differentiation here to find the slope of the curve without explicitly writing the dependence of y on x let's try to do it so y is equal to e to the power x y and that is equal to sin x let's find the differential of this equation which is y into x y 
is equal to differential of sine x this is product of two functions so we have to use u into v rule differentiation of u into v is equal to u dv plus du into v y kept constant and we have to consider the differential of e to the power xy plus we will now find out the differential of y by keeping e to the power xy constant this is equal to this differential is easy it is cos x into dx this is now y into differential of e to the power xy is xy into differential of xy plus this is e to the power xy dy is equal to cos x dx this is y into e to the power xy x dy plus y dx plus e to the power xy is equal to cos x dx let's collect all the terms with dy on left hand side which are going to be y into e to the power xy this is dy here plus e to the power xy and let's take all the terms with dx on right hand side so this is equal to cos x minus y into e to the power xy into y so this is y square and therefore dy by dx is equal to minus y square to the power xy plus cos x divided by y plus 1 into e to the power xy now at point 0 0 this dy by dx is going to be equal to 1 here when we solve the problem in this way we have basically used the concept of differentials this problem can also be solved by slightly a different method let's see how this is the equation that is given and we want to find slope of the curve at this point 0 0 so let me consider a function f which is equal to y into e to the power xy minus sin x now since our curve satisfies this equation we should have y into e to the power xy minus sin x equal to 0 because this is the equation which is satisfied by the curve and therefore this function should be equal to 0 what it means is the values of x and y are now not completely independent but they are such that this equation is always satisfied when we plug in the values of x and y in this equation they should be equal to 0 therefore f is always equal to 0 now let's find out df df by using partial differentiation is dou f by dou x into dx plus dou f by dou y into dy but what is meaning of this df df is the change that occurs in this function when we change values of x and y but remember that change in values of x and y should always happen in such a way that these points satisfy the equation of the curve therefore df should always be equal to zero and here therefore we have this relation as equal to 0. So, dou f by dou x is equal to it is y into e to the power xy into then we have to differentiate this product xy with respect to x which is equal to y minus this is cos x 
therefore this is equal to y square into e to the power x y minus cos y let's now find out dou f by dou y which is partial differentiation of f which is y into a to the power x y minus sin x with respect to y here now we have to use u into v rule so this is e to the power x y plus y i'll keep as it is and e to the power x y into differentiation of x y which is equal to x this is differentiation of first term and second term does not contribute anything to this differentiation that is equal to zero do f by do y therefore is e to the power x y into 1 plus x y so what we have is t f is equal to y square into e to the power x y minus cos x dx plus 1 plus x y into e to the power x y dy and this should be equal to 0 if we rearrange this equation what we will get is dy by dx which is equal to minus y square e to the power x y plus cos x divided by 1 plus x y into e to the power x y so this derivative dy by dx is same as this derivative that we have obtained by using slightly different method and therefore at this point at this origin we will get the slope of the equation which is given by this derivative dy by dt as equal to 1. This is how you can use the concept of implicit differentiation though in this case we were not able to write y as a function of x explicitly. We use the concept of differentials to obtain the slope. Let's quickly summarize what we discussed in this lecture. First we considered chain rule. We obtained relation for chain rule for functions of many variables then we use this concept of implicit differentiation to obtain the slope of the curve at a given point in next lecture we will see application of partial differentiation for changing the variables from one coordinate to other coordinate system thank you for watching this video